The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has decried the refusal of major political parties, including the All Progressive Congress, APC, and the People's Democratic Party, PDP, among others, to furnish the Electoral Commission with its audited account for years now. It also expressed the concerns that only 9 out of 73 formerly registered political parties that contested the 2019 general election legally complied with the directives of the Electoral Commission on the audit of the account. The commission disclosed that while 34 political parties submitted their audited accounts, only nine compiled the statutory or complied, I beg your pardon, with the statutory requirements of submission of accounts with the affidavit. Well, joining us to discuss this is Kunle Lawal. He's the executive director, Electoral College Nigeria, and Obina Chiku. He is a legal practitioner. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm going to start with you, Barista Obina. Um, according to the Electoral Act, I mean, I remember, if I, if I remember vividly, um, it's been almost eight or nine years since INEC has continuously acts that political parties publish their audited reports, um, give it to them or submit it. I, I also remember that at some point, um, Serap was asking political parties to make known their um, party uh, finances. As we speak, we're getting into another election cycle. And here we are again, INEC, decrying political parties' non-compliance. Is there anything in the Electoral Act that can hold these political parties liable? Um, strictly speaking, I do not think that there is anything, but INEC has, a, INEC has a, the power or powers to find a way around it. But again, I will, yes, as much as we, uh, the, we continue to say that the political parties are the corporate, or uh, corporates. I want to say that uh, more, uh, is it, uh, how do I put it, more uh, actions or talks should also go the way of the Alphinet. All this uh, coming or waking up uh, almost close to the election to make this kind of statement, I do not think that uh, is the right thing because at the end of the day, yes, we know this uh, is Nigerian election. But this election somehow will re reverberate all over the world. The world is looking up to Nigeria to do the right thing. If the simple uh, INEC or the umpire comes out to say that the political parties, even the so-called big, uh, whether big three or big five or so, uh, uh, fail to comply with the law, what does that show to the world? It shows that that continues to show that Nigeria is a lawless society. Because how can, how can a political party that failed to or refused to comply with the law comes out to now say that the same political party will, uh, will conduct election or present candidates in an election? To me, I, I will hold or I will cast most of the blame on INEC. INEC should have done this in long ago. It should have held them to account. You know that in Nigeria, if there's if no force is exerted, the Nigerians, uh, they have a way of not doing that in a certain way uh, and uh, where there is punishment and INEC is ready to wear the big hammer. Because among some of the power powers that INEC has, INEC has the power to deregister political parties. But I don't know, I don't know why. I, for me, the timing is wrong for INEC to make this kind of statement. All efforts should be geared towards ensuring that the election is credible, is fair, and uh, peaceful. Coming to say that the political parties have not uh, filed in their audited account, it shows also that uh, it goes a long way to, to show or to portray Nigeria as a lawless uh, society. Because, again, what happens if in the so-called audited account there are infractions or the things that uh, supposedly should... Uh, should uh, what should make the political party not to not credible enough to present candidates. But now, we are, according to INEC, he said uh, INEC said it's only nine political parties that comply. 
Then what are you, what message are you sending to the nine political parties that complied? When you are not leaving the so-called big three or big five or whatever, mm. you are not leaving them to go ahead with the elections, whereas the smaller political parties complied. I do not think that um, towing this line is the best thing. Okay. Um, Kune, let me come to you, of course. Uh, the Electoral College um, is more like a poster child for what parties and, of course, the electorates should um, be doing, should learn and know. Now, um, Baris Obina is here saying that INEC should be wielding the big stick, but they're not doing so. And many have decried, again, uh, the powers of INEC. Uh, they talk more um, than they do. Uh, but then, of course, we're going into a very, very um, serious election, one of the most keenly contested ever. Um, and we're thinking that um, why, why would issues like this not be dealt with before now? Because, of course, campaigns are kicking off from today. And if we do not have these audited reports, what kind of elections are we looking forward to? So thank you very much. I would first like to clarify the fact that within the Electoral Act 2022, Section 86.1 actually demands assets and liabilities of uh, annually of political parties to be stated. And I think subsection 2, that's 86 subsection 2 of the Electoral Act uh, 2022, State gives um, uh, a six month imprisonment and a one million naira fine to defaulters. Now, um, INEC, of course, has not uh, enforced this properly. I think the political parties, let's be clear, also do not clearly understand the political, uh, the electoral act. Um, it's sad to see that we have laws and passed by people even within the National Assembly which they don't even read or go over. It's highly shocking. It shows the degradation of legislation, legislative incapabilities in Nigeria. Now, um, if I were to proffer a solution, I would have said I never should have gone through this route. And the route I would have said is, none of your candidates will be accredited as candidates, except this necessary, this necessary um, legislative provision is met. So it would state that if you didn't produce your assets and liabilities for that year, none of your candidates from a, a party will be registered to run for office, regardless of whether you've done the primaries. And, you know, till INEX starts to take those kind of steps, I would say political parties will not exactly take INEX seriously. Um, this is something they flouted for multiple years. This is minus campaign funding of, of political parties, which also has been flouted constantly in Nigeria. The cost of phones also flout a lot of other parameters for running for office, which are prohibited by the Electoral Act. But because INEC, of course, is trying to play umpire and not exactly dictator, it has found itself in, in, a, in a mix where it has to just accept what is being pushed, what is being put before it. Um, I think it's about high time that we decide now, uh, INEC decides whether it wants to hold people according to the law and the constitution, and then also the Electoral Act of 2022, or INEC just wants to allow everybody pass the bar and um, do what they want in Nigeria. And we continue to have, like um, um, a barrister said earlier, a totally lawless society. Mm. Uh, back to you, Barrister Arbin. Solutions is what we're here for. Like I said at the beginning, SEREP is one of the only um, non-governmental organizations that have continuously put the feet of these political parties to the fire. But now it looks more like maybe the electorate needs to put the foot of INEC to the fire. But will this sort solve any situation? Because like Kunle has said, there are actually things that we can point to in the Electoral Act that need to be enforced. But then INEC can also, on the other hand, tell you that they're not a law enforcement agent. So, uh, agency, I beg your pardon. So where do we go from here? Okay. Uh, for me, number one, we, we need to, I think INEC or INEC uh, staff uh, needs to be trained. They need to be trained because the psyche or the, uh, from, judging from the activities of INEC, I will conclude, or one will conclude, that the only thing INEC is interested in is conduct, uh, 
is uh, elections, how to conduct elections. That's not all the powers that the law uh, extended to INEC. For instance, this submission of uh, audited account is not, has nothing to do with election. There are still other things that the law has provided for that I make you do other than election. But the concentration is only on election. No, those things that the law provides for or provided in or that were provided in the electoral act and the constitution, those things are there to ensure that the election is credible. If you fail to do those things, what you are invariably saying is that the election is not credible. How can you go into election with uh, political parties that whose accounts, uh, financial or whether uh, uh, assets have not been verified or accounted for for the past three, four, five years? How do we now know whether or not they they receive funds from uh, from foreign countries? How do we now know who is funding them? How do we how do we know? How will I make a decipher the activities? Number one, like I said, I think INEC needs a complete training. The staff needs complete training. And it's high time in Nigeria we establish an institution, an institution, whether it's a miniature one, that will that constantly will train INEC officials, especially uh, on uh, electoral act. And then again, uh, INEC will always say that uh, uh, the electoral acts uh, the amendment or whatever wasn't done on time so as to enable them to, to study it. That's also, that is also another area that we must look into. The National Assembly should be up and doing. They should stop playing politics with electoral law. Electoral law is amongst the principal legislation that guides or helps Nigeria to, to have credible elections. All amendments should come even one year or two before the elections mm. so that INEC will have ample opportunity to study them. Now, even if we want to uh, criticize them, we want to wage or uh, use sledgehammer on them. The electoral at the 2022 or so electoral had just came into, into force, I think the last three or four months. Then by that, they may not have had time to study it. Even but, but, if you're but, I, I'm sorry, I, I, don't know, I, don't know, I don't know if this excuse sits well with me. Um, I mean, INEC does have a legislative department. The, I mean, the spokesperson of INEC uh, is, is a lawyer. Professor Mahmoud Yakubu also is a learned gentleman. I'm trying to understand where it fits that these people may not have had time to be educated. They're the umpire. I don't understand which other duties they would have other than to digest what is in the Electoral Act, to be able to, in any way, execute it. Yes, uh, you know that law, most times, most times when a law is made, uh, again, it takes a challenge in court to be able to ascertain whether that law, whether or, uh, or testing that law to ascertain whether the law has the, uh, the potency to achieve the intent of the drafters of, of that law. I, I, I'm not making excuses for them, but I'm saying as a solution that, non, that we must at least engage the legislators, let all amendments come on, on time so that INEC will have opportunities. It's not only the, the, um, the legal department that should be conversant with the electoral, act, uh, the electoral law or the electoral act. It's not only the legal department. I think to me, all the uh, staff in INEC should be able to, should at least know the ABCD. That law should be translated, even if it means translating it in local languages, so that they all staff. Because again, in by February next year, some of these staff, uh, staff will be deployed to, uh, to monitor elections. If they don't know the law, how will they monitor the elections? I am thinking that election is, a, uh, is very, very important to every society. In fact, to every sane society. So we need to 
get uh, establish an institution, no matter how small, so that uh, the INEC staff will be trained. Then, secondly, ensure that the legislature or whatever amendment that is to be made to the electoral act comes on time. Then again, INEC should should ensure that political parties are monitored. Because even what we have in Nigeria, uh, for those that read political science and those that uh, have knowledge of politics, what we have in Nigeria cannot really qualify as uh, political parties. They can't qualify as political parties. A political party, the so-called political party in Nigeria that uh, has a, a, what they call is it, a, what do they call the so-called political parties that before a, a new entrant enters into the poli uh, political party, you have to go through some form of initiation or the, the initiation that you must know the person that knows somebody and knows somebody and all that the, the chain continues. That cannot qualify as a political party. Political party remains a vehicle through which uh, the citizens, citizens uses to enthrone or to extend their mandate to to uh, uh, fellow citizens who will uh, 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 be in charge of the reins of power and ensure that the so-called dem uh, uh, democratic dividend comes to them. But that's not what we are seeing. Okay. And they have even, the political parties in Nigeria have even isolated Nigerians. They now have click. Once it is, look at the board of uh, trustees, look at the, those that are the officials, can a non, a, a, an unknown person be elected to those positions? No unknown person can be elected, especially and particularly with the big, the so-called big political parties in Nigeria. Okay. Nobody will be as you are ah, there. You cannot be elected except one of the so-called cabals they, they, they chooses you or uh, has interest in you. It's mm. not a political party. That's not a political party. Okay. In the real sense and meaning of political party. All right, let me come back to you, um, Kunle. Um, still on holding feet to the fire, whether it be political parties, whether it be INEC. Um, where does the onus lie right now? Because INEC is on the one hand um, crying uh, about the fact that these political parties are not adhering to you know what they're asking for. But then, where does the electorate come in here? Because he, um, Barista, Barista Chuku just said now that most of the people who work in INEC don't have an idea um, what's in the Electoral Act. Um, but of course, we also, who have been agitating about certain aspects of the Electoral Act, how many of us know it? Those of us who want to go to the polls, those of us who want to cast our votes for political parties, where do we come in here? Like I stated clearly, um, this is part of the Electoral Act 2022. What I didn't add to my conversation earlier was that it has been part of the Electoral Act since the year 2010. This particular clause on parties delivering audited statements has been actually active since uh, the Electoral Act 2010. Now, um, the electorate and INEC are supposed to directly hold political parties liable for abusing this particular a clause in the Electoral Act. Has that been done? No. Do the electorate know it exists? No. Do the do, do INEC officials itself know it exists? I can say maybe 3% of or 4% of INEC actually know what's contained in the Electoral Act as is. Hmm. Uh, and, and when you look at it clearly like that, INEC in, in the second clause, that's 862, has the has the opportunity to either prosecute, and the, the clause there under states that you either go to for six months in prison or pay a fine of one million naira, depending on the political party. Though it doesn't clearly state who is going to prison, whether it's the chairman, the treasurer, the secretary, <laughs> okay. it doesn't state where who exactly is going to prison. So I don't know if they're going to throw in the old BOT. <laughs> I, I think another thing to also that's worthy of note is the amount that they pay as a fine for a political party. Yeah, it's also it's despicable. So a I, political I, a political I, party that collected hundred million, hundred million from a candidate. What is one million? So it's it's <laughs> like you said, it is um, despicable and it's very very embarrassing that 
at this point in time that's defined for it. So the real question you're going to ask is, is National Assembly also culpable because they put in this law? Are they also culpable knowing that they will never meet to that? So they decided to put a pickpocket price just to ensure they can get away with the usual actions which they normally perpetrate. And, and I think INEC has always concerned itself, like the barrister said, about um, execution of elections and um, money that is going to come from the federal government for them to run elections and also money that will come from development partners for them to execute elections more than they are to the practicality of actually ensuring that elections are free and fair. And, and at that point, you, can, you get to ask yourself the question, it's totally not surprising who exactly emerges from our elections. And, and I really wonder where we go from here, because again, like I said, the, the campaigns have started. There is supposed to be a bar where you don't go above when it comes to political spending. But who's watching? Who's taking notes? And who's going to wield the big stick? If there's nobody, then what do we consider fee free, fair, and credible elections? Gentlemen, in closing. I, I, I think there's a trick in the Electoral Act. So it clearly states if you're running for president, you can't expect more than five billion naira. Now let's look at let's say let's take the incumbent party. It's um its funds were hundred million naira. Um, they went most of the presidential uh, aspirants went to thirty-six states. That expenditure alone, minus how much in quotes they gave delegates and what they've been doing post that, I can say they have already expended like before campaigns. They've expended close to three billion naira. But now the electric act gets funny. It tells you you can't cross, but it doesn't tell you whether it's the police, it's the DSS, it's the judiciary, or it's INEC to hold anybody that breaks this parameter accountable within the electoral act. So it just looks like we have a law and we just put it there just as, you know, so probably somebody who put the, the uh, beware of dogs and the person doesn't have a dog in his house. That's exactly what we've, we've done with the electoral act. Finally, Barry Selvina, um, really, what do we do? Because, like I said, it feels like a, another deja vu moment. It keeps happening every election cycle. We keep hearing this story, but then nobody ever is used as a scapegoat or to set an example to all the other political parties. So it's business as usual. And who's to say that we should expect anything from this year's election? And I'm not in any way being trying to be pessimistic, by the way. Uh, they, they think they are, like I said, this is the usual thing. Uh, there will be election or elections. At the end of the day, uh, people will emerge and uh, go for Thanksgiving uh, in their various churches and uh, in other religious centers and uh, claiming that they have the mandate of the people. Uh, all that we need to do is to watch them. But again, if we must, if we must get it right, we must also empower the civil society organizations. Because no society actually grows without the civil society organizations. Mm. Let us empower them, even in the electoral act. Let us empower them to demand uh, that I may produce or does uh, certain things. For instance, if we have a provision that empowers or allows the civil society organizations to add, demand that I may produce or uh, make available your detailed account of all the political parties one, 12 months or six months or eight months before an election. That will ginger INEC. That will force INEC to do the right thing. Let us not uh, 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 at every point in time make laws that, uh, that uh, somehow it will be difficult. That's why when I started, I said, when you ask me of the punishment, I said, I may could find a way around it. If it's what is uh, uh, expressed in the electoral act, electoral, uh, what is uh, expressed in the electoral act is even ambiguous. Who do you even arraign? Who do you, uh, if I am a member of People's Democratic Party, will you also arrest me and ask me to be part of the payment of one million? Well, big question. Oh, uh, that begs, that begs answers. Well, I mean, what, what will happen in the next election remains to be seen. But I want to say thank you, gentlemen, because our time is up. Um, Kule Lawal is Executive Director, Electoral College Nigeria, and Obin Chuku is a legal practitioner. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank you for...
the opportunity to talk to Nigerians. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us. But before I go, I would quickly like to give you my take. Here's my take. Consequences are part of the natural order of life. In scientific terms, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. It is unavoidable. That is, unless you are talking about politics in Nigeria. It is commonplace for members of political elites to avoid the natural consequences of their behavior, however corrupt. Now, a fundamental principle of democracy is the separation of power. With it actually comes the necessary checks and balances to keep each arm of government in check. But our political reality is such that the executive behaves like a drunk baby that cannot be quieted by its parents. The legislature is no more than a den of vipers, too cold-blooded to offer a glimpse of, of warm future for the constituencies that members of the chambers are supposed to be representing. Now, as for the judiciary, like an old man realizing he cannot keep up with you know, its moral duty to scold the children when they err, it limbs along occasionally, reminding us of, you know, its relevance and its importance. Mostly, though, it fails like the other arms of government to enforce consequences for bad behavior. Now, our politics will never change until the backroom deals made to elect individuals against the express rules stated by the party manifestos and constitutions come with express consequences. And that is my take. I'm Mary Anacle. Thank you for watching.